The late Pastor T.B. Joshua is back in the news for operating what looked like a cult in a synagogue church while alive. The British Broadcasting Corporation, BBC, has just published a three-part expose on how the late preacher sexually abused and denigrated people he called his disciples. There are also documented stories of these abuses while he was still alive. Here are videos from our video archives to bring stories of abuses from over the years. My encounter with T.B. Joshua, I'm not here to judge, but I'm telling you people, it's not everything you see on TV that is real. So I left to the hotel that Emmanuel Don to carry my belongings. Arriving in front of the hotel, people were running. People saw me and started running. I never understood. When I approached them, I, they said, T.B. Joshua, after your arrest, two weeks later, T.B. Joshua made a statement that you are dead, that I was dead, I was not alive. Go to the street of synagogue church at night. You will discover people are sleeping. International visitors, who, what they saw on TV. They came, they saw something else. They are stranded, they are sleeping on the streets. In the street, of the, the police have shipped them, have even put a blockage. But you, T.B. Joshua, you, came out, you come out to do charity and call, make it to, to, for your own interest, for the world to know you are doing good. But why in your street people are dying? Why on your street people are suffering? I was, live, uh, I was living a life of scamming. What do you know as Yahoo Yahoo? I was into scamming and all sorts of things. So my father wanted to disown me. I was seeing Snag, uh, T.B. Joshua, what he is doing on TV. So I decided to, to go there. For deliverance. I went, I traveled to Lagos, Nigeria. I arrived to Synagogue Church. I was launching in Emmanuel Lounge beside the church. Then on a Sunday service, I went there. I was in church when T.B. Joshua said, God has shown him another realm of spirit where youth of today are engaging into internet fraud, what you call Yahoo Yahoo. And there are people who are doing masturbating, they are masturbating online, all those type of things. So if you're in this church, you have involved yourself in any of these things, come out. He will love to see us. So we came out, many of us. So after service, we wait. We were asked to go and come back the next day, 10 o'clock. We went and came back on Monday, the, next, the following day. So I came there. I shared my experience with them. I need the help of a man of God to pray for me so that I can turn, turn away from my evil deeds. And they told me, and I told them, I was about to be disowned by my father. So I was among the few people who they choose to see the man of God. That same day in the night, we went on top of the gallery. On top of the gallery, they have already submitted the, that is the, they submit the name, the list to T.B. Joshua. That is your name and what your case. T.B. Joshua will touch you, he will do like this, he will touch you, he will do like this. But then I had my kids. He touched me, turned me. I never feared anything. I never felt. He looked at me. He stood up and went out of his office. He went to the other office. Then after two minutes, he came back. He called one of his uh, coordinators. They should take me to the footballer's home where I was living. The footballer's home is uh, under the canteen site, under the mango tree, where you have dormitory beds. Yes. That's where the footballers were living. And other member, when you come to the church, you want you, maybe your kids, you somehow you want to keep you. That's where you, you are living. So I stayed for the church in two months, some weeks. I was called one Saturday evening that I was to I will, I will be I will be among the people who attend deliverance on Sunday. So on Sunday morning, Sister Inka, who is preaching today, you are one of his disciples. You came and told me that this is what I'm going to say. This is what I'm arranged my word for me. And you told me when the man of God is praying, I should not resist. I should fall, Sister Inka. If if I said anything contrary to what you told me, you're free to go down on your knees and talk to God to curse me. Like what is happening today. And I went there. I confessed. I was in the life service. I confessed. And the TV show was going, doing this. I was going like that. And I fell down. But I was ashamed in my spirit. But later on, after one month, I was asked that TV show wanted to see me. I went to his office. His office is on top of the gallery. Yes. So I went to his office. He told me that uh, he wants to talk to my father. So I gave my father's phone number. They called my father and he said, I am T.B. Joshua of Synagogue Church of All Nations. I'm calling you in, the, in regards of your son, John Pabe. There's something I have seen in him that is very important. I want to discuss with you one-on-one. -on -one. So I'm inviting you to come over. My father gave excuse that due to the nature of the job, he cannot travel. 
because by then he was a commissioner of police. So he told TV Joshua he cannot travel. So TV Joshua told him, check your program. If you see that you can make it, then this number, call this number that we are calling you. After like two months, two weeks, one brother inside the room, he was an elder man. He sent me to the roadside beside the church to get him fried yam. I took the money. I went to the roadside. I bought the yam. And as I was coming back, Sister Olohita, who is fat and has one eye, is somehow having a problem with another lady who was sitting in front of the prayer line. You called me. I said, where am I coming from? I told you that uh, an elder person sent me to get a young from him at the roadside. He went up and informed T.B. Joshua. I was in my in the room when they called me that immediately T.B. Joshua wanted to see me. So I went there, T.B. Joshua was angry that what if I was I went to the roadside, a vehicle knocked me down. They'll say the uh, synagogue church have killed, has killed again. They'll say this is this. He was angry. I was asked to wait outside. Brother Joseph, you came and you gave me 50,000 naira with an anointing water, with a phone number that I can, the people cannot continue to keep me in church. Let me go when my family wants to come. We should call the number before coming. And before I left the church, you people had to video me. You have to video me, I should hold the money, and you video me, you say I should thank the man of God for his time and the money he has given me. I did everything you asked me to do, and I left the church. I went back to Cameroon. I explained everything to my stepmother, and she told me she was going to see how we can go back with my elder brother, because my elder brother had some mental problems, and he has been carried to that church. They prayed for him, but without any... He came back the same thing. The same way and it dates so my stepmother said it's an advantage for for her to also take him along so i waited from for their uh, signals for like two months three months nothing i had to go back to the church i went back to the church and this time around the coordinators never wanted to let me see the man of god the other the security man should not come close to the the to the gate sister online come i met you but i chris you saw me, who is a disciple today. You saw me, I told you I wanted to see the man of God. T.B. Joshua, who you claim, who will give me excuses. So I left. One evening, one afternoon, I, I came out. I was taking pictures, calling family back home. Taking pictures because some whites also, international visitors, were taking pictures. So I was taking pictures too. But before I knew, people, policemen or more without uniform came. They took me along. We entered the canteen site. There was another guy who was arrested to them. I don't know, maybe during that period, Boko Haram was threatening them or whatever. I never knew. Before I knew, they said uh, the camera, they bought camera, they bought their camera, and they started videoing me. That I, I confessed that I'm a member of Boko Haram and I tried to burn the church. TB Joshua hit me on the chest. There were police everywhere. Bomb squad came with dogs and was searching everywhere and told the policemen. This guy is a member of Boko Haram. I was handcuffed immediately. I was being handcuffed, and the commissioner of Ikotin uh, Ekbe was the one who led the delegation, carrying me in convoy at police headquarters. In Ikeja, TB Joshua was making call. Yes, Your Excellency. I went there, arrived in the commissioner office. He handed me to OCSAS, Mr. Abba Kiari, who was the OCSAS of uh, the police command in uh, Ikeja. So Abbe Akari had to send his boys. They had to put me like chain. They like chained my leg. Now, with the handcuff in the hand too, we had to go to Tibi Joshua Church. We arrived at the church in the night. So Tibi Joshua, one coordinator came and gave the phone to one, the team leader. He was talking with Tibi Joshua. After then, a lady came with brown envelope, containing money and gave them. We left back to the, to the station. We left back to the station. At the station, that was when I noticed that it was money. So I was being put in the cell. You know, they have cell one, cell two, cell three, and there is a female cell in them. So there were churches. On the first one, we get asked the people in the cell, not let nobody talk to me, and let me not talk to anybody in the cell. In the first one week, I was not okay. After three months, I became the marshal of the cell. Churches were coming every Sunday. We take away, they will come and give us food. They will pray for us. Churches were going there, giving us food. When they hear my case, they will shout. Every weekend, you know, when they arrest you, when SARS arrests you, maybe you have been arrested the first time and forgiven the second time, they, maybe or the third time, you, they will not leave you, they will not let you go. They will kill you. We're in the cell like this. 40 something, 30 something of us. And behind the cell, that's where the key, they do their education at night. 
I was talking with somebody before I know they'll hang up the person in the night, they'll kill in the night. And the family will come in the morning, they say they have sent they have sent him to prison. Kiri Kiri, go and look for him in Kiri Kiri. After five months, they had to invite my embassy people. The ambassador had to send two representatives. They came and told me the case is more than them. Involved TV Joshua. And the case file, the charges are too high. They cannot do anything. That all, all they can do for me is to call my family and inform them. That was all. That I should take heart. And they left. But that day, after six months, three weeks, you know, something happened. I called some member. I sent I sent one sister who used to bring us food, like we bring false food to sell. I sent him to get us biscuits. Then he gave us some juice like Fanta. Then in the night I told my friends, brothers who were in the cell with me, I told them we are going to pray. We are going to pray. If you are a Muslim, you are here, you stay by the corner and you pray to God. If you are a Christian, we are going to pray. This night we are going to make a vow to God. If he releases us from this bondage, we will go and sin no more. We will go and do his work. A prayer was made. We use that biscuit and uh, Fanta as a supper. That and as like we are taking an oath with God. That if you save us from today, because it was like we were living in judgment day. People were dying, they killed people. We never knew who was next. I knew that that was where I'm going to end. But prayer was made in that night. We prayed. The person in God came twice. Stop us. Told you, if you people pray again, we'll shoot you. You're making noise. Pray in silence. But we pray. And in the next morning, my IPO came and told me that I'm going to court. I prepared myself. I prepared myself. They took me to court. Ikeja Majesty Court. Court 2. Ikeja Magistrate Court, Court 2. It was a female magistrate. In front of her, they read the count charges, six count charges. One, attempting to bomb Synagogue Church. Two, suspect of Boko Haram. Three, I'm robber. Four, the confession I made at the church that I was a fourth star. They had to add it there. And they had to add Aka. They had to add conspiracy. Six count charges. The lady turned and looked at me. Then he asked, Where is the complainer? They said, Chief Joshua. Where is he? He is not in the church. He is not in the court. Any representative, nobody. Then she looked at the police officer and asked, Any exhibit? Did you people find anything like gun, bullet, anything from this child? They said, Nothing. She was angry and discharged the case and acquitted immediately. She said, If I know anybody, I should call to come and sign. Immediately, there was a there were PM newspaper and for other news agency agents in the in the court. Some of them were telling me I should come and testify on TV. They would give me transport to go back. So a lawyer told me for the safe for the safety of my life, I should just take my things and leave immediately. Let me not even make the church or any member to know that I am alive. That was how to know that. I am out. That was how I left to the hotel that Emmanuel done to carry my belongings. Arriving in front of the hotel, people were running. People saw me and started running. I never understood. When I approached them, I, they said, TB Joshua, after your arrest two weeks later, TB Joshua made a statement that you are dead, that I was dead, I was not alive. So I had to explain everything to them before they told me, one lady told me I should go to the Lord Choosing, which is at Lagos Ibadan Expressway, their headquarters, that they will assist me. I went there. When I went there, I met some elders. I explained the situation to them. They were so amazed. They never believed me. They had to go and investigate themselves. I told them, go to SAS, Ikeja, and investigate. Go to Ikeja Magistrate Court and investigate. After the investigation, I was supposed to appear to give my testimony on Sunday service. I appeared, I gave my testimony on Sunday service. And that was it. They paid my transportation. I traveled. So I'm letting you people know my encounter with TB Joshua. I'm not here to judge, but I'm telling you people, it's not everything you see on TV that is real. Go to the street of Synagogue Church at night. You will discover people are sleeping, international visitors, who, what they saw on TV. They came. They saw something else. They are stranded. They are sleeping on the streets. In the street of the, the police have shipped them. Have even put a blockage. 
but you, T.B. Joshua, you, came out, you come out to do charity and call, make it to, to, for your own interest, for the world to know you are doing good. But while in your street people are dying, while on your street people are suffering, you can't go at night to visit them, to give them, to go to their head. They have a reason why they came to your church. Let's be real. Let's face the truth. It's time for us to face the truth. Not everything you see is real.